My name is Aidan Walden. I'm the uh, Global Director for Cloud Architecture and Engineering at Fortinet. We are at Fortinet. Uh, we're an organization that's been around for uh, since about 2000. Um, we boast the, the largest install base of, uh, or at least we ship the, the most um, appliances annually of any security provider. So our, our global footprint is massive. One of the things that we're very focused on is driving um, cyber awareness. We, we're founders of the uh, World Economic Forum Cybersecurity uh, Organization. We focus on developing uh, cyber warriors and cyber professionals so that we can bridge those skill gaps that exist as customers try to move into the cloud and have to deal with new dynamic edges in their environment. Uh, but we've been very successful. And where we're really gonna focus is on the integration of our capabilities. And something to point out is the fact that our portfolio is for the most part, an organic portfolio. And we focus on integration across that entire portfolio. That's gonna be a key part of what we demonstrate today. So in our agenda, the first segment, I'm gonna talk about what our mission is. We're gonna talk about just for a few minutes about the challenges to agile security. And I'll, I'll key in on uh, the agility uh, piece of that. We're gonna talk about the importance of being cloud native uh, and having application integrated security. That's the core that, of our, our demo focus. And we're gonna talk about Fortinet in the cloud ecosystem. Now, the demo will take from those concepts and we'll start to practically show you in a fun way, I think, uh, via a red, red team, blue team scenario, uh, where we'll have an attacker and a defender and we'll show how this threat intelligence uh, works across what we call the Fortinet security fabric. And then we'll also focus on threat intelligence. So we'll be synthesizing threat intelligence within, within this uh, uh, security apparatus. So we talk about a mission that's focused on securing people where, and devices wherever they may be uh, and data wherever it may reside. And in the context of our conversation today, it's really about cloud. And you know, our mission really is derived from, and it's focused on driving a customer uh, mission which is to have positive outcomes from their cloud deployments. So in the context of cloud, we're really focused on um, making sure that cloud delivers on the promises uh, that, uh, or the expectations that customers have for moving to cloud in the first place. But not every cloud deployment works out. There are a lot of risks. Uh, the, the risks that we're focused on at Fortinet are advanced persistent threats. Ransomware is a, is a big threat. Um, ransomware happens to be a threat against some of the applications uh, or the application example that we'll focus on, on today. And really legacy types uh, security practices are struggling to keep up with um, the more sophisticated advanced threats that we see. And you know, ransomware uh, seems to uh, pro proliferate because of that. The cloud attack surface is expanding greatly. The, just the fact that you have this infrastructure sprawl that spans so many different, what we call new edges and so many um, uh, enclaves that may have their own disparate requirements and uh, security profiles. You know, how do we bring that attack surface, shrink that attack surface? Um, and the, the ecosystem complexity. So think about being on multiple cloud environments, right? I'm using Kubernetes, I'm using, you know, security oriented, you know, uh, legacy architectures. Um, there's some of it's deployed in Google and AWS and Azure, and I have multiple vendors on top of that. Um, that creates a lot of complexity. And you're, you know, you, you deal with you know, situations where the, the security teams aren't skilled across all those uh, environments. And then finally compliance. You know, the, we've gotten compliance down, I think, in the traditional data center sense and the you know, traditional security practice. But now how do you apply compliance with the, the velocity of delivery um, that we see? And so that's a big focus. But these are compounded, I think, by the things that the, the challenges that organizations specifically face. Um, and so, these, you know, when I talk to CISOs and CTOs, you know, they point to secure, you know, inhibitors to security and agility in cloud um, relative to skill gaps. So you have, I mentioned the security practice is not um, really uh, capable of, um, you know, keeping up with the, the movements and the velocity that, you know, development teams will deliver 
um, applications or the speed at which they deliver applications, the, the type of competencies they have to have. We already have a skill gap in uh, security, right? And Fortinet's working to fill that skill gap through education. But then we also compound that and amplify that by the fact that we have cloud skill gaps, right? So the two of those together create a major problem. And so they really create an environment where you're trying to apply legacy security practices to an advanced uh, software defined environment. And so, you know, how do we, you know, as a, as a provider of security, how do we help close that gap is what we're focused on. We also have manual workflows, so, you know, skill gaps, legacy security operations lead to things being done the way they've always been done. You have manual workflows where you have move ad change activity and that activity uh, inhibits the application delivery process, right? You have an agile process and a CI/CD workflow that just wants to churn out product and, and, and get uh, services to, to end users. Well, if I have security checks along those way, if I have to open up tickets to change things, uh, that's an inhibitor from a cloud perspective. And finally, this is probably one of the biggest pieces, the organizational challenge. CISOs specifically have a challenge with cloud because they're not directly aligned with the application delivery process. Typically, the application delivery is done in a silo that doesn't really consider security quite often. And one of the things that we focus on is how do we align the CISO organization with the, the development teams, the people who are delivering applications? And so the, the, the message that we want to drive is consider security early in your cloud architectures, uh, factor it in in terms of best practices, standard uh, security um, um, architectures when you're building your networks, and then start to align and be, you know, uh, align those uh, application delivery uh, teams with the security delivery team so that they can work more effectively together. And so we, we look to accomplish this through a, something that's really um, uh, a conceptual approach that we've had for a long time, this concept of a security fabric, where the infrastructure itself actually helps you solve a lot of these challenges that we were just talking about. Um, we, we touch a lot of different uh, areas and a lot of different, we protect a, against a tremendous number of threat vectors. We're talking about cloud today, but they all are interlinked. So no matter where the IT estate exists, in the hybrid environment, in the data center, the remote, um, the edge uh, or the remote user, you know, work from anywhere type user, all of these users are trying and all these locations are trying to access cloud applications and resources. And so cloud is a big part of that. But the security fabric approach is how do I take uh, intelligence from any part of the uh, enterprise network and use that to uh, distill, distill usable threat intelligence across the infrastructure? And how do I automate that? And then how do I manage that in a simplified way? So we look at doing that through uh, means of integrating with applications and infrastructures. So on one side, you have the users, the consumers of applications and services, but we have to have some information about them. So we have this um, security fabric that can take in information about users, devices. It could be a headless device, you know, think of IoT and OT type devices, uh, have, you know, myriad of different operating systems and different levels of embedded security or not. Um, and we're consuming that information and we're, we're taking and consuming information from these different environments. Um, and we're taking all of that together and building a context to understand what is the intent of the user? Uh, how do applications uh, need to connect to one another and what information are they sharing with users? And we feed that up into our uh, uh, Fortinet security fabric. And this fabric concept becomes really an engineering approach to taking all of this information and all of this context and enriching data and, and providing that across the entire security infrastructure. We're increasing visibility by doing that. We're enriching the data so we have better analytics to make better decision-making to inform uh, more uh, uh, automated policies. Um, and we're doing that through integration into the underlying applications and infrastructure. And this is what we're gonna be talking about today. But it's not just an ecosystem that says, hey, buy everything Fortinet. It really is not at all. Uh, we're very focused on an open ecosystem. We want the customer to be able to define, to define 
uh, their own ecosystem, and we want to be able to facilitate um, that environment uh, and be a part of that environment. So we work with all of these different uh, partners. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list, in, list, and by the way, nothing that we're going to show is going to be exhausted. It is just meant to be, uh, a, you know, an example of, of of all the things that we can do. But we connect to these different environments. We connect to these different partners uh, to drive a, a better security posture for our customers. And from a from a technical perspective, it really gets down to providing these what are called connectors. So our fabric approach connects to different environments and different applications, and it makes it one. So if you're a, le a legacy security practitioner, um, I, 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 I don't mean that disparagingly, of course, but if you are a security uh, practitioner um, that you know needs to quickly consume information from AWS or from Azure uh, or uh, Cisco ACI or you know a semantic uh, uh, de deployment. You can consume that information very quickly or a third party threat feed like Facebook threat feeds not listed here, but you know we have some other examples. And we can quickly enable that integration, we, we can start using that information and we uh, can start doing positive things, but the, the idea of these connectors is that we can develop a robust a robust security. Um, uh, posture across all of these different environments and we can consume intelligence from all these different environments and from different vendors. So all of this is being, you know, really about being cloud native because being cloud native for us is what do we, what is the primary outcome of cloud, right? It's driving agility. And agility comes from understanding the software defined networks that you're on, on which you run your systems, um, understanding the applications themselves that are, that you're trying to protect. Right, and that's driven by automation. That's driven by integration into those systems and, and services. And then by doing those things, we can close the skill gap um, that we have and we can automate workflows. And that's really, when I say achieving cloud nativeness, that's what I mean, all right? So it starts before the infrastructure is even deployed with our products and our, our solutions. Uh, we focus on you know, a, a software defined approach to even deploying the infrastructure. So we have a, a tools such as our uh, Terraform providers that are available on our products. Um, we want to automate the deployment of infrastructure and make infrastructure itself a software defined process. So we have a lot of use cases where you can, as a customer, you can simply uh, click to deploy uh, best practice architectures. We have security workflow automation. And one of the things that we'll demonstrate here is how that uh, works today in our, in our uh, demo session. But we take something that happens in a cloud environment in a very simple way, we tie that to some action, right? It could be complex, it could be multiple actions that take place or comp, you know, uh, multiple triggers perhaps. Um, but we want to take you know, every opportunity to automate um, response, right? Because agility for the security practice is much different. This is, it's the same thing that they're after. The, the security practice and the business are after agility and when they're moving to cloud, right? That's the number one reason for cloud. But for the security practice, it's not about you know, getting to market faster or you know, analyzing data in some bigger way. Really, it's, it's about faster time to remediate and respond. When we can do things like this with these automation tools, you don't have to be a, a completely upskilled security practitioner um, to, to take advantage of these things. Um, you can use these to quickly automate actions in your cloud environment to respond and remediate security incidences very quickly. So here's a more of a, a, a little bit deeper on, on how that might work in one of our environments. So um, on your screen, you can see that uh, our, we have a policy. This looks like a typical policy table you might see in a next generation firewall. But within this policy table, we define what are called dynamic objects. And in this case, we're simply saying anything that shows up in an environment, in a cloud environment, that has some metadata value, in this case, uh, a couple of key tag, uh, key value pairs, then treat it in this way. So when we do that, we're really driving an intent-based policy. That's a framework. So as a, as a security operator, I don't have to work a ticket and say, all right, somebody just deployed an application. I need to enable this port. I need to enable this you know, uh, service for them. The, the security policy already knows what the intent is. It sees the object immediately based on this metadata. 
and it applies the policy to that object, right? So we're driving that intent. Nobody touches anything. We remove the 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 day to day workflow activity that would have been required, right? So the security practitioner can then focus on uh, higher value um, uh, activities. So we're going to pick on SAP today. Uh, we have a dedicated practice at Fortinet around cloud security for SAP. There's a big migration for SAP to cloud over the next few years. Pretty much anybody on a legacy uh, SAP ECC system is going to be moving to an S4 HANA, probably in a public cloud environment. So we're very focused on that as a public cloud use case. And we have a lot of product integrations around that. So we're gonna demonstrate um, three particular ones of the many that we have. Uh, and this is not just, you don't have to be an S SAP expert, by the way, to appreciate this today. You, it's really about just demonstrating a complex application. And SAP is about as complex of an application as it, as it gets, right? It's got all of the crown jewels of a business, uh, you know, financial data, HR data. If, if it's compromised, it's devastating. So why not pick on this one? So we're going to talk about uh, our FortiGate next generation firewall and how it's integrated, how it provides uh, protection um, and filtering in the infrastructure in a very intelligent way and how that's integrated with our application delivery controller, which is doing a couple of interesting things here specific to SAP. It's, it's application aware. By the way, the FortiGate is application aware in this instance too. So it knows about SAP and the SAP protocols and it can talk to SAP. Um, and uh, we're gonna talk about you know, how that replaces some functions uh, that would typically be out of the box for SAP and enhances it. And then finally, we've got this, uh, something you may not have heard about is uh, Forta Deceptor. And so Forta Deceptor is um, an advanced threat hunting tool that we have. It's got some, to call it a honeypot would be a, a disservice to the tool because of the capabilities it has to breadcrumb and, and provide lures uh, for attackers. So we're really gonna have a, a little bit of fun with that today. And so we're gonna demonstrate the three of these together um, and show how this really demonstrate real, the, the Fortinet security fabric approach and how this integration, both to this underlying SDN, right? This architecture you see here, um, to one another, these different components from the security domain um, and to the application itself, right? SAP in this example. We're also gonna touch on some non-SAP stuff a little bit, just to give some, uh, uh, some slightly different examples as well. We're gonna talk about um, uh, a Kubernetes deployment whereby um, the Forta ADC is integrated into that environment. So this is what our dem uh, demo environment looks like. It's a bit simplified from that uh, reference architecture that we have with Microsoft, but it's really gonna be a hub and spoke design. It's a full SAP environment. So we have a complete landscape set up with uh, the NetWeaver stack and the database. We're gonna demonstrate some real world attack vectors, some things that actually happen. In fact, our demo environment is open to the public and we were just, noticing this morning that people have been trying to attack it. And so our attack logs are, are filling up. Um, so that, that was interesting. I think we still have those logs in there. Um, so we're gonna talk about the FortiGate next generation firewall as a cloud native firewall for ingress inspection and also some east-west inspection and segmentation, which is really important. So segmenting your environments as a cloud best practice is something that uh, is, is very important. And we wanna touch on that. Forta ADC, we're gonna talk about SAP or application specific security. Um, some of it's, it's gonna act as a reverse proxy in our use, uh, in our use case, along with some uh, uh, dynamic load balancing for a, a Kubernetes environment. And then uh, lastly, uh, we'll tie in the Forta Deceptor. Um, it's, you know, and where we have this deployed, right? For, from a security perspective, it's in its own virtual network. So it's a tool for threat hunting, but we have it separated from the rest of the production environment. Um, yeah. You're going to show SAP specific app security, um, mm -hmm. I guess, and you can talk about this as you go along, that's fine. But is it going to be, um, is, is what it's doing for SAP fairly generic? Like, am I going to be able to think about this with any other application that we would have out there? Or is it going to be a lot of really SAP heavy specific stuff? It's, it, we can do this with other applications as well. Um, this is going to be SAP specific in the hooks that we have for this, but we have hooks for other applications. Gotcha. Like think Office 365 could be a great use case in our portfolio, right? We're very strong there. Um, and we can do some really advanced uh, threat hunting and analytics, uh, sandboxing and uh, inspections in the three, 365 stack. So that would be another example, right? Um, so absolutely. Um, and then we have, 
other parts of our portfolio, which are tied into a myriad of things like even you know Facebook and Twitter, and we can pull in threat data from there. 